Hello everyone, welcome back to the Distinct Mastering YouTube channel. My name is Freddy. Today we're going to be talking about the Sound Toys Crystallizer plugin. I've been playing around with it on my productions in recent weeks and I've been getting some really good textures and interesting sounds out of it, so I wanted to share it with you. But before we begin, if you like the content I put out, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and that bell notification will keep you up to date. Now let's get in to the Sound Toys Crystallizer. Okay, here we are with a session that I just kind of created today, and I've got the Sound Toys Crystallizer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an overview of the Crystallizer, and then I'm going to get a little in-depth with some of the sounds that I used it on and was playing around with. And this beat is just, you know, a loop that I made real quick. It's nothing special. If you're feeling where it's going and you want me to turn it into a full track, drop me a comment below and maybe I will. I'll show you what the beat sounds like before we begin. All right, so, you know, the Crystallizer is a really cool plugin. Let's talk about what it is. Basically what it does is it grabs a slice of audio and it then will replay that and delay that and potentially pitch it down or play it forward or backward. That's right, in reverse at a number of set times. So you can think of it kind of like, like a delay unit, pitch shifter, forwards, backwards. You know, that's kind of one of the things the manual refers to at the very beginning. But basically, in a nutshell, what it can do is it can create some really nice shimmering sounds, hence the name Crystallizer. You can take a very stale sound and make it very big and vibrant. Let's get into the controls. Here we have the Crystallizer at its default state. Typical Sound Toys plugins at the top, you have the presets, and you can flip between them with the arrows. You can save a preset or go backward if you'd like, undo. And then uh, you have a news section, the information, you can get to the user's manual, and the bypass button. Now, getting into the controls, you have the mix knob, which is the dry and wet. And I'm going to bounce around a little bit because it makes a little more sense. And then you have the recycle knob, which is essentially your feedback. Then you have the amount of delay, and you can select that just like the Sound Toys delay units. And then you can change the amount of pitch or splice. Now the splice knob is going to determine how long the sample snapshot will be. So right now it's set to an eighth, you can go 16th or 132 and then you can pitch. You also have a threshold knob here and then you have a reverse and forward switch. And you have um, a sync knob here so you can go from milliseconds or time to your DAW's tempo. And then you have a gate and a duck. This can get you some different sounds depending on where you set that, your input and output. And then you have your tweak, which this gets into a little bit more detailed control. So you have your pitch offset, which is related to the pitch, your splice offset related to the splice, delay offset related to the delay. You have smoothing here, and then you have a low cut and a high cut, your feedback mode, mixed, ping pong, or dual. And then you have an attack and release knob, and then you have choice for your ducking controls. So output, feedback, or both. So that's an overview of what the knobs are. If you have further questions on what they do, drop me a comment below. It's pretty self-explanatory. You know, the most confusing ones, if you're a beginner, might be these offset, but these are just gonna delay the reaction of each of these respective knobs. So to hear what this thing can really do, let's put it on this drum beat that I have. So the drum beat by, by itself, just sounds like that. But when I turn this thing on, you're instantly getting a bunch of pitch sounds all over the speakers, and that's a cool effect. Check this out. You can automate the pitch knob and get some crazy turntable sounds out of that. You know, if you want to hear it 100% wet, You can get some really cool sound effects with that. So if I wanted to take the splice up, you can see that it gets a little more grainy. And I have it on reverse. So this is forward. So think of that like running a record forward or backward on a turntable. 
and then it's playing slow and so you could do some cool things imagine running your whole mix through this thing another thing that i kind of created and if you're interested in this preset drop me a comment below and maybe i will send it to you or you could just recreate it but i was able to take this beat and turn it into this and i got a little you know with the attack and release the low cut and the high cut the gate and the duck i got this like percussive sound to go on top of the beat it kind of fills in the space without you could almost turn it into a percussion loop at that point with with that you know say if you were to take out all the eq and then yeah the possibilities are pretty endless with this thing so another thing that i did moving into another sound here is i had these keys that they're kind of like trap keys i was just playing around seeing what the crystallizer can do and prior to the crystallizer you know, I played this on the keyboard. I probably won't keep this in the actual track if I built this track out, but I was just, this was one of the first sounds I put in before the drums or the bass line. And I was like, let me see what the crystallizer can do to this thing. And I came across this preset. Sounds like a trap beat all day long. Trap producers, I bet you are using the crystallizer. It sounds exactly like some of the tricks that I've heard those guys do in some of the productions. And so if I wanted to play around with this a little bit, check that out. That's super cool. You can control kind of the tone. And then you want more, turn up the recycle. So the crystallizer, imagine, you know, that's using it on a, a synth right there, but imagine using it on vocals, maybe try it on some acoustic instruments. You know, the possibilities are endless with this thing. I would give it a shot on a lot of different applications. Another thing that I actually did, and I'm going to show you, I took this sample here, and although it's uh, rather boring by itself, this is what it sounds like. It could be used for something cool. Kind of sounds like a, at first an old grandfather clock or a huge, you know, bell. It's kind of like an FM sound. It's got, you know, but it's a little boring. With the crystallizer, I have it on the default setting. And I might have adjusted a few things here, but, you know, it just fills in the space and gives it some character. And then what I was able to do was turn that into something even crazier with another tactic of mine. So, you know, the crystallizer itself is not a plugin to be slept on. I personally was sleeping on it for quite some time. I'm going to be playing with this thing. There's a lot of tools like this on the market, but this one is very unique in the sense of what it does and the controls that you have to really dial in your sound. So I hope this video helps you out. If you have any questions on the Sound Toys Crystallizer, please drop me a comment below. My name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering, and I help people master their music. If you need help with your mastering, please don't hesitate to contact me. And if you like the videos that I put out on YouTube, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and that bell notification will keep you up to date. We will see you on the next one.